Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, July the 29th. It's Monday in 2024. I think I'm on a roll here now. That's the third time in a row I've actually announced the date. Boy, that's unusual for me. Anyway, I want to play a little clip for you. This is from 2020, four years ago. I can see from the background I was still in Europe at the time. I need to share with you. This is about General Soleimani when he was killed. And what one of my Middle East uh, uh, counterparts there said about Iran. Listen in. They're going to do a war with Iran, one way or the other. There's no way around it. I remember my uh, source from Israel said that to me very bluntly. Iran is going down. Well, and there's no, that, that, no doubt, right? And this one here was, I did the video about, uh, it was right after his death and when General Soleimani was actually going to Saudi Arabia for a peace agreement. Uh, Iran was uh, for on behalf of General Soleimani on behalf of Iran. He was changing the entire course of the Middle East. They could not have that, and no, Trump did not authorize his death. He may have given his blessing, but Israel themselves actually took him out. I know this because I have the photos of it. I was always asked not to publicize those photos. Um, some very interesting things I have photos of. I won't get into all of it there, but uh, let me just share with you this here, though. This uh, coming out now because there is a major threat that Israel is getting ready to strike Lebanon. Lebanon gets involved. Now, Iran, President Mossad uh, Pizanshkian, uh, on Monday phone call with French uh, counterpart Emmanuel Macron, warned that any potential Israeli attack on Lebanon would have severe consequences for Israel. Does that mean Iran will get involved? Or just the fact that he knows that uh, they have very powerful weapons in uh, Lebanon? Well, that is the case. In fact, the uh, Hezbollah has made it quite clear that if Israel begins to launch an invasion, once they see Israeli warplanes up in the air, they are going to use a nuclear device in the atmosphere above Israel and cause an EMP attack. Wow. Now that's the first time I've heard of an EMP attack really being taken and put out there. But the, do you realize the seriousness of that? Hezbollah has the technology. You have to detonate a nuclear type of device in the atmosphere high enough up that it will cause a total blackout of power. Computers, everything go down. If you're living off the grid, for example, you know, and you've got solar panels, things like that, you don't want an EMP strike to happen. And not only do you have that threat, but I mean, we've already got the big question, did uh, a certain country there actually mm, attack mm, their own people? Got to be careful when I'm here on Patreon, what we say there. But my point I want to share with you, and I'm just going to quickly just remind you of this, the EMP shield. Uh, and sometimes they have sales going on. I don't know. It looks like... Uh, they've already passed their July 4th sale, but listen, this is getting to a serious situation. You, I wouldn't even bother with waiting, right? Let me see if there was something in the cart from before, but, uh, um, well, let's just add something here. Just for your reminder, we want to get right back into the broadcast here, though. INL 50, uh, once you have an item in the cart, when you type in INL 50, Let's see, here we go right there under the coupon code, INL50. They're going to knock $50 off for you as well. Looks like they are having some kind of a sale because they already got the one that was for $459 down to $399. Maybe it's a sale on certain items. Anyway, we want you to be able to save money, so just keep that in mind. But I, I'm saying that because I have... You know, I, I don't really talk about EMP Shield a whole lot. I just don't. But now that I know that Lebanon has that capability, that means Iran has the capability, which I, should be obvious. We know they have nuclear weapons, even though they claim they don't. We know they do. Um, 
Any country could do that to us very easily. Uh, and, you know, look, you can get them for your solar panels, your generator. You can get it for your house, your car. I have them on my car. I really need to put it on the house. I got, I got one for the house. I don't know how to install it is the problem. And I got to get an electrician out to do it. But I got to really, I keep saying it, but I got to put it, I got to stop putting that off. That's, it's that serious now. Anyway, so this is what he's saying. There's going to be severe consequences. And I have a feeling he's not looking at Iran doing the attack, but because of what they have equipped Hezbollah to be able to do in retaliation against Israel. Now, uh, speaking of Israel, Israel is moving up their tanks and things like that up to the border uh, up with Lebanon. And it's taken some delay to get those tanks moving up there, but now they're moving them. They were looking for an excuse, I guess, and so now they have an excuse, so now they're moving the tanks up there. So they're getting ready to go in, uh, but, you know, if they're just now moving the tanks up there, it's going to be some time yet. Don't expect this to be tomorrow, next week, or anything like that. It may take a couple of weeks before they actually do their move, because just like everything in war, you got to get all your pieces in order before you can actually do your strike there. So... I want to share something with you, though, right? This right here, this was sent to me just recently. And I have a very powerful video for backing this up. This here, Vladimir Solovoyov's Yov is shocked by Trump's words, mainly because when he gets to this part here and he's playing Trump, uh, President Trump, makes the comment, one, he's, he's concerned about they want to vote anymore, but he also makes the comment about he's not a Christian. Listen into this a little bit here. They got subtitles. It's собой олицетворяет вот этот вот правый израильский лоббизм. Трамп сказал какую-то фразу, которую я, например, понять не могу. Он почему пообещал христианам, что они больше голосовать никогда не будут. Сейчас совершенно не так проинтерпретировали. Наверное, может. Просто давайте послушаем, что он сказал, просто интересно понять. Если вы хотите спасти Америку, соберите свою семью и всех, кого знаете, и проголосуйте. Проголосуйте. Let me fast forward, because he says, let's play it without the, the overlying spot on there. Because one guy says they just misinterpreted the words or mistranslated it. No, they did not. So let's yeah, Реально на английском языке, потому что я вот слышал уже, когда забитый перевод, и почему-то он говорит, что он не христианин. Давайте все-таки послушаем вот, Трампа без озвучки, все-таки услышим, что он реально говорил. Пока перевод был правильный. Хотя бы сейчас. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. Говорит то, что я, я молчу, какой христианин? В законе. Да, а не, он не говорит, что я не говорит. Я говорю, молчу, какой? I'm the Christian. The Christian. В законе. Now, they're debating on whether or not he said, I'm not a Christian, etc. And that, even for me, I couldn't quite figure out what he said. Well, the odd thing is, in the meantime, uh, this video here, and I don't remember if my wife sent this to me or our sister Rosa sent this to me or if I just stumbled across it. I forget which one it was. Anyway, we're going to play it, though. This is, of course, Ivanka Trump, his daughter, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, behind him. And I don't know who this man is here, but listen very carefully to what is said on this video. It's an honor to be here with the first Jewish president of the United States. It's an honor to be here with the first Jewish president of the United States. He was a little shocked by the comment. But, of course, I was also told once before he had converted to Judaism. 
but they wanted to keep that under wraps. I, I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, kind of interesting. So uh, anyway, let's get into the, another thing here, the third temple. Uh, I want to go into this, share some of this with you. Those of you that will recall, uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. I'm just going to take a picture of the screen here so I can pull some stuff up for you there. A little while back, I began to show you some images. And um, let's see here. We're going we're gonna to get to this here. I was, this is, this is one of the old, this is, this is not the completed one. It was just the top part of one of the doors that they're building for the third temple. And, uh, that was one there, but I just got a message that they're working on the glass doors on the inside for the offices of the third temple. And there's one right there on your screen. Um, and so a friend of mine is actually, uh, works in this shop here. He's been keeping me up to date, the different projects they're getting on building. They're supposed to be building some kind of swords, uh, necks that are going to be, uh, going in the third temple, uh, things like that. So it's been pretty weird as I watch this, right? Uh, so Israel is taking this very seriously. And, uh, and also too, uh, I had gotten some more intel, something I wanted to share with you as well, because I had asked uh, Israeli intel, and by the way, I mean, there's pictures that I get to see and things like that. Some of these I can never share with you. One of those happens to be an Israeli assassin. Uh, it's a woman, and, uh, you know, and a somewhat attractive woman, you know. I mean, I can only imagine how that uh, she has been so successful, because, the uh, person that's going to uh, bite the bullet, so to speak, probably never sees it coming. Uh, and, uh, you know, but uh, I, from what I understand, she has become one of the leading assassins for the Israeli government and very focused on Lebanon right now, uh, Lebanese people that they're trying to take out. And... So I get this type of information, and I'd actually asked a little while back, uh, I wanted to know, is the, th is, the, is the dome, this little building right here, is this going to be taken out, or are they going to build, as we see in this picture here, are they going to build, uh, this thing always does that, tell me where are we at. Are they going to build the temple next to the Dome of the Rock, uh, such as was suggested by the former M, uh, MP member or MK member of Israel, Yehuda Glick? And uh, from what I'm being told, this is going to end up having an accident. And it is going to more, most likely be blamed either on Lebanon or Iran when this happens. Uh, also, it was uh, shared with me that there is going to be some very violent weather weapon that is going to be taking place as well. It's going to be affecting Turkey with the uh, violent earthquakes uh, that they're capable of doing. And I know the U.S. has got this technology, but I did not know. Well, I actually knew about, I guess, about two years ago that Israel, too, has this technology because I got that from Israeli intelligence that one of the earthquakes that had happened in Turkey, I don't know, a year or two years ago, something like that, they actually did that earthquake. They were trying out their technology. And so, there, of course, there does come that question, too. Will they actually use that technology to cause something to happen to this little orange top or yellow top building right here? Um, and I'm trying to say that to be, you know, because I'm not against, by no means am I against the Palestinian people, so I don't want that to be uh, misconstrued there. I don't agree with this building of the third temple, and mainly the reason I don't agree with it is because of Daniel's prophecy in chapter 7, verse 25, and he shall speak words against the Most High. This is from that fourth kingdom, the fourth beast that's diverse from all the other ones. Uh, and he's going to put down three kings, by the way. There's ten kings. He's going to put down three of them. I think that represents the Ten Commandments, personally. And when you only got seven left, guess what? That's for the Gentiles. I won't go any further than that on that. 
Uh, but anyway, he's going to speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And he shall think to change the seasons and the law. But that word law in Hebrew, vedat, is a decree. And they shall be given into his hand until a time's time and a half a time. The decree that he's going to change and the season that he's going to change is this beast kingdom uh, leader, which I believe is the Antichrist, according to what we have in Matthew's Gospel 24, uh, the Hebrew version specifically, because Jesus, when he refers to the when you shall see the abomination that maketh desolate, sitting and standing in the holy place, know that it's even at the door, right? And in the Hebrew Matthew, he says, uh, when you see the Antichristos, that is the abomination that makes desolate, desolate, then you know, you know, if you're in Judea, flee to the mountains, etc., right? So he identifies that as the Antichrist. And so therefore, I feel like strongly that the Antichrist is part of this fourth, fourth beast kingdom that is trying to change the season and the decree, specifically the decree of Artaxerxes. You know, certainly God had planned for Israel to rebuild their temple, rebuild Jerusalem, but it was under the decree of Artaxerxes. And when Artaxerxes gave that command for the Jewish people to leave Iran, go back to that modern state or the old state of Israel back years ago, uh, or Persia, not Iran, but Persia in this case here, and they were to leave Babylon, go back, they were rebuilding their temple. That was the season for that to be done because the Artaxerxes had no clue, but the Messiah was coming. And when the Messiah was coming, he there had to be that second temple had to be restored for him to be coming back to that. Uh, but in this case here, you know, the, for the most part, Jewish people do not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. So therefore, they believe that they have to bring back the temple for the coming of the Messiah. Kind of get it? Make more sense? No wonder why Daniel prophesies that there will be one that will think he can change the season and the decree. He's got to have a temple, but yet it was already done and already fulfilled, and the Messiah came. Everything was fulfilled. This is the reason why I try to help my Jewish friends and stuff to recognize what the Word of God actually says. Not what we want to make it say, but what it really says. And so therefore, I am, I'm actually going to work, I'm putting together a small book on this very issue, going into that depth of it, It'll even help Christians because I bring it together with the book of Revelation there. So I hope it will be a blessing for you. Uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you for being a support here on Patreon. And in the event this ends up over on Israeli News Live, I don't think it will. But if it does, uh, we just would encourage you to come and support us here on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Uh, you can be a part of this. Uh, we greatly appreciate your support. Your, your donation is a blessing. Uh, my, right above my head, though, is our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And if you go there, you can donate online. You can donate by mail. Uh, your support is needed. It really is. And we do appreciate your support. Uh, so anyway, thank you. And Danoon Institute P.O. Box or Stephen Benoon P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. And you can always donate right there online. So God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli.